In this video, we're going to be talking about setting up the CorelDRAW workspace to work with our EasyStone macro for maximum productivity and so you can follow along with the video tutorials. Everything will be in the same place as we are demonstrating in the video tutorials. Now, I am going to be using CorelDRAW X6 in this demonstration. However, CorelDRAW X5 would basically be almost identical. There are a few minor differences. Um, when we come across those, we'll cover what those differences might be. So we have a custom workspace available on our website. So let's take a look at that. If you go to easystonetemplates.com, click on the Rhinestone Design Shop, and then we're going to click here uh, in the freebies and instant downloads. And here you're going to find the uh, custom workspace for CorelDRAW X5 and X6. Uh, and a couple other freebies as well. I'd go ahead and take advantage of all of those uh, as long as you're going to request that download. I'll go back into CorelDRAW here. Now I did mention we're in this video demonstration we're going to be using CorelDRAW X6, the 32-bit version of CorelDRAW. And this is very important because EasyStone only works with the 32-bit version of CorelDRAW X6. And for those of you who aren't aware, anyone who purchases CorelDRAW X6 um, and is using a 64-bit computer, you do have the 32-bit version as well. And you can install both versions on a 64-bit machine. It's a bit confusing because when you uh, install CorelDRAW on a 64-bit machine, it doesn't give you the option by default to install the 32-bit version because it assumes being how you're using a Windows 64-bit machine that you want to install the 64-bit version. But if you look on your install CD or if you look in the files that you downloaded, if you got a digital copy, you will find a folder on your install CD that says x86. And in that folder will be another setup file which will install the 32-bit version of CorelDRAW. So that's very important. EasyStone only works with the 32-bit uh, 32 bit version of CorelDRAW. Now, one other point to make about the differences between 32 and 64. Really, as it relates to rhinestone design, there really isn't much difference, if any. If you are on a Windows 64 bit machine, technically speaking, you can have more than 8 gigs of RAM on your computer. If you're not using a 64 bit machine, then the RAM capability caps out at only 8 gigs. So if you're using a 64-bit machine and you have more than 8 gigs of RAM, there is an advantage to using the 64-bit version of CorelDRAW, technically speaking, because it can access all that additional RAM that you have installed in your machine. So let's say, for example, you have 16 gigs of RAM. Well, your uh, process when you're working in CorelDRAW would happen much quicker than if you only had 8 gigs of RAM. But this is only really true if you're using a very heavily uh, intensive graphic in CorelDRAW where you really see much a significant difference. As it relates to Rhinestone Design and EasyStone, you won't see much of a performance enhancement um, if you were using the 64-bit version of CorelDRAW. And so that's why we as developers decided we are just going to support the 32-bit version of CorelDRAW for the time being. Now, perhaps when it switches over to CorelDRAW X7, we'll take another look at that, um, supporting the 64-bit version. But for now, 32-bit version only of CorelDRAW, but you can install the 32-bit and 64-bit side-by-side. Not a problem. Okay, so let's talk about setting up the CorelDRAW workspace. We've created a custom workspace for you. This is the same custom workspace that we use every single day when we're creating our designs. So what does this custom workspace consist of? Well, we have a custom toolbar that we've made. And so when you install the custom workspace, it's going to automatically install this toolbar for you. Now, I want to point this out because this is not something that we created. Yes, we created the, the layout of the icons, but all these tools that you see across here in this, this toolbar here, these are CorelDRAW functions, not an EasyStone function. So I just want to make that distinction. 
Um, over here on the far right, however, you can access all of our various macros that we use. And as an EasyStone version 3 user, you'll have access to these macros as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So this is all Corel Draw stuff. And then over here to the right, you'll see these dockers. Now these are the most commonly used dockers that we use. So you have the object manager, the macro manager, the contour, the shaping, and the text properties. Now you can add to this take away from it, whatever you want to do. But these are just the defaults to get us started. Also down here at the bottom, we also have a different um, uh, color uh, bar here. This is an RGB color palette, and by default, um, when you first start CorelDRAW, it actually has a CMYK color palette uh, installed. And we just prefer using RGB colors instead of CMYK. Technically speaking, it makes no difference really, but um, but I just want to point that out. And by default, uh, CorelDRAW puts the color bar over here to the right, and I don't like that, so I moved it here to the bottom. Okay, so those are just a couple of minor little tweaks um, that installing the workspace is going to do for us. Now, let's go ahead and install the workspace and show you how that works. So what we're going to do is go up to the Tools menu and choose Customization. And that will open up this window. And right up here at top, see where it says Workspace? Go ahead and click on that. Now, I already have the Workspace installed, so I'm going to deliberately change to a different one so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to delete that one. All right, so I'm in this a Workspace called Apparel Designer. And you're going to see that now we have different dockers, right? Object Manager, Hint, Macro Manager, and Contour. Notice that color bar over here on the right now. Um, and notice that our, our rhinestone toolbar is now missing. It's not uh, automatically installed for us. And then we have this other toolbar up here, uh, which is a custom toolbar for this apparel designer from uh, Advanced Artist, I believe. Uh, it's been a while since I installed this. I've never actually used this, but that is what that custom toolbar is. So what we're going to do is we're going to import. So we're going to choose import. And I've already saved this custom workspace file. So I've downloaded the zip file from um, the shopping cart, saved it to my desktop. I unzipped it. And then I have this workspace file on my desktop. So I'm going to choose browse. And there it is on the desktop. It's right here. It's called easystoneworkspace.xslt. And we're going to go ahead and choose open and hit next. And we have some options of what we want to include in this new workspace. And by default, we want to include the Docker layout. We want to include the custom rhinestone toolbar, the shortcut keys that we've set up for Easy Stone and other shortcut keys that we might have set up, uh, and the status bar. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And then we have a choice to import into the current workspace or create a new one. And we're going to create a new one based on the X6 default workspace. And we can call this whatever we want within reason because we are limited to the number of characters. So I'm just going to call it EST Rhinestone. Easy Stone Templates Rhinestone. So we'll hit Next. And you can see again it's telling us what items will be included in our new workspace. And when we hit Finish, then you're going to see the whole workspace shift change and now you can see the uh, dockers are situated the way we want them. We see our color bar across the bottom. If we hover over it, you'll see these are RGB colors uh, instead of CMYK colors. And you'll see that our custom rhinestone toolbar um, is available to us here. And notice that these icons are fairly large. And that's because of a property that we set for this particular toolbar. See how these icons are all small icons? These are very big icons. And that's why. Okay. Now, so that takes care of the custom workspace. Now, there are a couple of things that may nag you. They did me. Um, and we're going to walk through those things step by step um, because they're kind of uh, buried and hidden here that many of us don't even know that exist. So let's just go by these one by one. Let's click on general. See if there's anything here uh, on the general tab. Um, there's really nothing to change here. I, I like the welcome screen. Some people don't. And if you don't, we can start a new document by default or any of these other options. So I, I like the welcome screen, though. So then we'll go on to display. 
The only thing that I would encourage you to check, if it's not checked, is auto panning. Um, that is, I don't think that's checked by default, but I do like that. And we can talk about what that is later. And then on the edit tab, uh, we have some additional options here. Look through these, I don't think there's anything there. Here we will make a small change. On the power clip flame, now this will be specific to CorelDRAW X6 um, because they made a change. And down here, there's an option here. It says show lines in empty power clip frames, always or on the screen only. And this we want to check on screen only. And again, that is just for X6 users. Um, it's a small change. Um, we don't want an X to be printed or exported um, if we have a power clip. Okay. If you don't know what a power clip is, that's okay. We're going to explain that later too. All right, so snapped objects, um, all of these are checked by default, so I think these are all okay just as they are. Um, we'll come down here to uh, dynamic guides here. I don't ever use dynamic guides, so we'll move on. Um, alignment guides, I really don't use that. VBA, that's always fine. Save. Now, this is something that we do want to make a change to. Auto backup when. Uh, I'm going to choose every five minutes. You could change it to whatever you want. Um, the other thing that um, does annoy me quite significantly is this option, make backup on save. Uh, and so I don't want to choose that option. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that option. And then the power trace plugins, we'll go ahead and leave that alone. Let's see here, toolbox. I don't think there's really any changes to make there. Let's look at our document here. I don't think there's any real significant changes that we need to make uh, with any of these options. And that's it. I think those are all the... Uh, there Actually, there is one thing on the background here. Print and export background. I would actually turn that off. Um, and that would be the only other change to make that I would make in, in these initial settings. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And now those settings are changed, and then we would choose Save Settings as Default so that the next time uh, we come into CorelDRAW, all those settings are still available to us. So those changes will get us prepared uh, to work here inside CorelDRAW with EasyStone.